spring 2020, we're going to be opening up this new student residence. Uh, who's lazy? Okay, so for those of you who say you're lazy, it's a 20 minute walk from AUA, so you might consider staying at home. Um, but it will have up to 61, for, uh, 61 beds for students. Um, they're going to be shared rooms. It will be fully uh, accessed for disabled students, and the anticipated cost is $50,000. Who gets priority, Yerevan-Tis or Shurjan-Tis? Ayo, thank you for laughing at my weird Armenian babba. I appreciate that. I would like to now introduce Aram Karyan, who's going to talk to you about one of my favorite parts of AUA, Epic. You can use that microphone. Hey guys, so my name is Aram. I'm operations manager at Epic. Epic, this for letters stands for so Entrepreneurship and Product Innovation Center. And we have a yet the only in Armenia student, student startup incubator. You would say, what is a student startup incubator is? So this is a program where we help student teams with launching their startup ideas. Okay, so basically knowledge and business ideas. Uh, let's say you are a UA student, you have a startup idea, build a team around your idea, so it means you're welcome. You're already welcome to Epic. So twice a year, we are opening a call for applications, so for such teams. They apply, they go through a uh, selection process, and once they are accepted, they will go through an intensive, specifically designed 12-week program. Uh, so uh, we have workshops, mentoring sessions, tech walks, uh, uh, so uh, meet us with entrepreneurs and and so on. So all all of this to help you with launching your startup idea. Uh, we have a huge local and international network of advisors, experts, and mentors to help you on your journey of building your own startup. Uh, so we have very nice facilities in the next building, co-working space, offices. We have kitchen and it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week for our residents. We have a unique lab in the, uh, uh, so again, it's the next uh, building. Uh, it hosts a unique equipment, uh, cutting edge equipment such as 3D printers, uh, 3D scanner, CNC machine, vacuum casting machine, and all other stuff for those who want, uh, who start up idea related to hardware. Okay. So, uh, about our success stories, we have a number of teams. That we incubated and they already are running. They have businesses, so one of them is Bridge. It's a uh, student company matching platform. Uh, let's say you are a student, you apply, you register on the platform, and you will have access to hundreds of um, so it's early employment opportunities uh, and uh, internship opportunities. So they cooperate already with more than 60 companies, they place more than 100 students. Uh, to different uh, uh, so jobs, okay? Uh, so they participate in a number of international local uh, competitions like Seven Star Summits, Star Boost Weekend, Seed Stars, and the recent one, Imagine Cup. They uh, won the Armenian competition, the European competition, and they participated to the global one in Seattle in the USA. Uh, the next exa example is Currency. After graduating from Epic Guy, was accepted to a leading European fintech acceleration program. He got investments in the amount of 20,000 uh, euros. He launched his company in Estonia, in Armenia, and he aimed, so sorry, in Estonia and Latvia. Now he aims to launch uh, his next branch in Armenia. So guys, this is a unique opportunity for you. You're welcome to Epic. Thank you. So, Aram, before you leave, who's interested in, in doing their own startup through Epic at AUA? Now let's imagine you're not admitted to AUA. Is it possible that you could also still work with Epic? Yeah, so that's something for you to know. Good, thank you. Okay, academic programs. So AUA currently offers five different programs. Um, who is applying for fall 2019? So who wants to start in September, next September? Who's 2020? Okay, who's in 10th grade still? Oh, there's a couple of you. You guys look older than everyone else, though. <laughs> so we have five different programs right now. Who's interested in business? Okay, well, this is, it's, it's much less than I thought. English and communications. 
future journalists, future translators. Okay, uh, computer science. Okay, what about engineering sciences? Who's future engineer? We've got a few of you. Do I have any female engineer sciences? Interested? Where? Here. Yes. Here. Oh. Here. 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 Armin, my daughter is gone. Give my two females chocolates. Don't kill anyone. All right, and then data science. Who's interested in becoming? Okay, good. Is there anyone here who's not interested in a program? Is anyone still undecided? Okay, so today is a really good opportunity for you guys to attend. We have two program sessions, one in English, one in Armenian. Um, you should definitely try to attend both to figure out what might be of more interest. But again, one of the actual priorities of AUA is to add more bachelor's programs. So for those of you who are going to start in fall 2020 or fall 2021, we may have some more in addition to those that we just discussed. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you to Suzanne Dabman. I love her as much as you guys love me. Um, at AUA, the way academics work is that, and this is really important for parents, about 50% of your studies are going to be in your major. The other 50% are going to be in something called general education. Who knows what gen ed is? And eh, wait, wait, I see some hands. What is gen ed? Tell me. You can take psychology to learn how the human mind works. You can take languages. You can take um, uh, Chinese language and culture, for example. This will broaden your horizons. You may not end up working in the field of Chinese language and culture, but who knows? Maybe you will. Maybe you'll go live in China after you learn a little bit about the language and their culture. Um, you'll learn about human rights. You can take courses in music appreciation. Um, you can take courses in sports analytics. For you data science majors, you, you might want to take this, but if you're, even if you're not in the data sciences, you may want to look at, uh, consider taking a course in sports analytics. Um, environmental science. Um, we all need to take that course to understand what's happening in the environment here in Armenia and throughout the world. But in a nutshell, the general education requirements are courses outside of your major that will expand your lives, your worldview, your perspectives, and you'll learn all about things that are way interesting, um, that may end up interesting you so much that you'll want to specialize in those areas. Um, one course that everyone will take is called Freshman Seminar, and this is a course where you will learn how to think critically, ask good questions, learn how your study skills, how to do your best. You'll learn how to write in an academic way so that you can um, expand your ability to analyze situations, ideas, perspectives. Um, it will help expand your view of the world, of your place in the world, and help you and encourage you to be an active member of um, both Armenian society and, and be a good citizen of the world. So that's general ed. Do I have any questions? No. So half your courses, yeah. Can we take several, uh, education? You will take many general education courses, and and you'll have a choice of many different courses. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask to hold off on questions till the end, just oh, okay. to see how we're doing on time. So I see, uh, Suzanne, you're stuck with us because there are more Gen Ed questions. Oh, good. So you can stay until then, and then once we're done, um, we'll let you guys ask some questions. Does that work? Does Suzanne deserve some chocolate? Oh, yes, yes please. Okay. Thanks. And I want to also add that this is not a place where, like in some of your K through 12, where you just memorize what the instructor lectures and you just repeat it on an exam. It's just memorization. Here, in order to succeed, you have to be able to think critically and problem solve. You have to be able to synthesize the information you get in your lectures, rethink it, recombine it, add in your own perspective, and then provide it in an essay, a paper, or an oral presentation. So while memorization is always important for the learning process, that's not the AUA model. And Gen Ed fosters that sense of creative thinking and problem solving. Bring in your own voice, your own perspective into the classroom and enrich that perspective with the additional learning. Okay, so now we're going to talk to you about how to apply to AUA. Um, who has a sister or brother who studies here? Okay, can they tell you how to apply to AUA? Yes, who said yes? Don't listen to them. Because <laughs> typically they're going to give you a lot of wrong advice because every year we're, we're changing how things are done at AUA. Um, if you have a question, do you ask Dr. Rhodes? Do you talk to other students? Do you talk to your mother's friend who might work at AUA? Or do you talk to the Office of Admissions? <laughs> right. Let's say there's a company who's going to guarantee you admission to AUA if you pay them 50,000 wrong. Do you pay them? No. Why? Because they're lying. There's no way to guarantee admission to AUA. But the best advice is going to come from us. Okay? So, what is this website? Your online applies. It, exactly. It's our online application. Do you need to come to AUA to fill out the online application? No. Exactly. But if you're having a question, can you come to our office, access your application, and ask questions? Yes. yes. Good. Okay. So, should 11th and 10th graders be starting their online application now? Maybe. No. The 10th and 11th graders should start preparing to apply, but the online application is for those who are in 12th grade. Who has already started an application? It's easy-ish? Yes. Yes. Ooh, I like that. Confidence. So our deadline dates. What is our first deadline date? <laughs> what happens if you submit it at 12.01 a.m. December 16th? You will not be considered for early admissions. And you're going to come and you're going to cry, my teeth have never been He tried it. And I will say you're going to have to wait for regular admissions. So we always encourage people, if you're going to apply by a certain deadline, make sure you apply a few days before that deadline because at the end of the day, so around 11.59 or around 11 p.m., everyone starts accessing the server, the server slows down, you're going to have issues, you're going to call us, but it's 11.59 p.m. and we're sleeping. Um, so to avoid all those situations, try to submit applications a few days before the deadline. What is our regular admissions deadline? There's more than it's something that you can do. How do you know this? Oh, you've been looking. You're smart. So the regular admission is March 31st. What is the difference between early and regular? No one knows. Do you want to know what the difference is? You find out, uh, you, exactly, you find out earlier. Now sometimes, certain years, the early admission uh, deadline might have a higher admission rate, but that's not necessarily always the case. Um, so if you need a little bit more time studying for exams, you might want to consider waiting for March 31st. But if you've taken your exams, you think you have good scores, then definitely we encourage you to apply by December 15th. What's the rolling date? June 30th. June 30th. What does this mean? The last possible one. Pending space availability. So if there's no space, what happens? Nobody. Okay, so this is really important. That's why we encourage you to try to apply by those first two deadlines. Application requirements are the following. We have an application for admission. We have proof of English language proficiency. We'll talk a little bit more about each one later. Proof of math proficiency. You'll obviously need to show us that you're going to be graduating high school in the year before uh, the year that you're applying to AUA. There's an application fee, and you might be invited to an interview. 
All right, so those are the uh, requirements for now. For the entrance exam, English is either TOEFL or IELTS. Has anyone already taken the exam? Yes. No. Great. For math, we have, uh, we have the SAT and the ACT as available exams. Who's already taken one of those? Who has taken the AUA math test? Will we accept that? Yes. Who said no? Yes. You're wrong. No. We will accept it. No. Okay, that one, give her a chocolate. She's going to start crying. <laughs> and then her hair will turn yellow from all of those tears. No, they eat purple, but not yellow. Okay, so the a anyone who took the math test, it was discontinued in July 2018, but we will continue to accept your exams as long as they're still valid for fall 2019 and fall 2020. One quick note about SAT and SA, uh, ACT, there are limited seats. So unless you want to force your parents to take you to Georgia, I recommend you plan ahead and start registering for those exams, OK? Um, selection. Do I get to decide who's admitted to AUA? No. Does Dr. Rhodes? No. Now who? Arminet? No. Arminet, I think, like that one. So AUA. Uh, does holistic admissions, which basically means, this is you, there's no magic formula, right? There is no certain set of scores, grades, extracurriculars that you can do to guarantee yourself admission to AUA. So the first most important thing is to know how many seats do we have for each program, because in addition to offering holistic admissions, we have something um, called competition. So for those of you who are applying to business, we have 160 seats available. For English and Communications, we have 90 seats, Computer Science 80, Engineering Science is 30, and Data Science 40. Do we accept, let's say we only have 150 applicants to business, will we accept all 150 regardless of their scores? No, right? We're definitely making sure that everyone meets a certain threshold. But again, when we talked about early admission, let's say there are 30 phenomenal data science people who apply for early admission truly exceptional they'll get admitted there are only going to be 10 seats left for the regular admissions so sometimes early makes a difference if you're a very strong candidate but everything is based on seats available this is the limit once they fill up whether it's early or regular that's it I see you have a question, I'm gonna answer it at the end, is that okay? You'll remember it, don't forget it. So the selection process, as I mentioned, so once you submit your application, our office, so who's here for my office? Do I see Shushan here? Say hi to Shushan. She graduated from our BA in business program and she couldn't get enough of AUA so she decided to work with us. Do I have anyone else from our office? Okay, so Shushan, myself, we have a woman named Patil, we have Don uh, we have Lili, so there's a number of people who work in our office who will start reviewing your application to make sure it's complete. Do you think it sets off a good image if you guys do incomplete Kisat Parad, uh, if you submit it Kisat Paradim, right? So make sure that you're attentive, and if you have questions, ask before you submit the application. So if your application is uh, updated, the status is updated to complete, then your application goes to an undergraduate admissions committee. They will review. We have their names, cell phone numbers, addresses listed in our Office of Admissions for you to write them down. Ah, no, it's a joke. Um, so this is a very uh, gothmic. It's sort of a, a group of people that we don't say who they are so that they don't get hounded with requests of please admit me. Um, but they are part of our faculty, and they're looking at uh, the applicants in the sense of will this person succeed at AUA. And they're looking at every single part of your application. They're looking at your English, they're looking at your math, they're looking at your school, they're looking at your extracurriculars, your volunteer experience, your essays. Make sure you write your own essays. Even if your parents speak good English, don't let them write your essays for you. And then at the end, once uh, they assign you a review, you might be admitted, you might be denied, you might be waitlisted, you might be deferred, or you might be admitted conditionally. Okay, so there are five different statuses. Decisions are released within 12 weeks of the deadline. How do we release decisions? By email. By email. So we know what spam is. Please check your spam, because a lot of times our admission letters will go to spam. You'll come screaming at me, but you promised me 12 weeks, and I'll go into your spam, and I'll find it for you. Okay? What is AUA looking for? What is the admissions committee looking for? So when you're applying, your application needs to show 
that you are passionate, that you're committed to your studies, and that you're actually interested. I see some people are taking photos, just FYI, this is also on Facebook Live, so you can watch this video whenever you want. When you miss me, when you need to see more. <laughs> Um, we're also looking for students who are interested in enhancing the community, not only in our media, but also on campus. So do we, are we looking for students who are just coming, coming to AUA, taking their classes and running home? No, we want you to be part of, the, um, part of the campus, part of the community. We're looking for students who want to thrive academically. Who said they're lazy? This is not your university if you're lazy. What happens if you're lazy? You will ultimately get dismissed. And that's not something we want to see. So if you are serious, okay, so where are my students? How many hours are you guys spending on your studies a day? Many. That is not a definitive answer. Lucinet. Where's Lucinet? Did Lucinet leave me? Yeah. Each class takes up to three hours. So you guys should be ready to study at least four to five hours a day. That's still less than a full-time job. Um, we're also looking for students who have a sense of curiosity and a desire to learn, and we're looking to hear your voice, to hear your individuality. What did Dr. Rhodes say about memorization? It's wrong. Say that again? It's wrong. Well, a small part. it's only a small, a small part, right? You need to analyze, you need to have your own view. So that, that's an amazing, interesting part of the AUA um, academics. In terms of what holistic admissions is defined, I've already mentioned what they are. The three most important parts are your high school grades, the English, and the math. But there are also, as I mentioned, extracurriculars. Who does things outside of their studies? What do you guys do? Who dances? Volunteering. Going to where? Going to different places. <laughs> I went to Spain. Yay. I went to camp. Camp? OK, so who does Olympiads? Olympiad. The no nature and part of the room. Army, do we mention us? Olympiad and there's most nice and big issue. Okay, so do we have anyone who does sports? Okay. Do we have anyone who does a musical instrument? But when I talk about musical instrument, I mean not the one where your parents are saying, did you practice your piano? Did you practice your violin? It's where you're actually practicing and you're succeeding and, and, and you're engaged in it. Um, we're also looking for people who have awards and leadership positions. So, for example, uh, if you're part of the UN, you've um, you know you were you've done model UN and you were uh, assigned a leader role, leadership role, then that is something that will help your application. And then there are two essays. What is one thing that is not included here? The vacation. I don't know why you just said that. You're lucky I didn't see you. The interview. Let's say you have phenomenal grades, you have phenomenal test scores, but you have a really bad interview. What happens? So we had a student in the past who had a 780 on the SAT. What's the maximum score? 800. Right? He had a 108, I think, on the TOEFL. What's the maximum? Right? Uh, decent grades, not great. It was a he. What do you think happened after the interview? Uh, why? He didn't speak English. So this is a really important note. I don't know how some people do it, but they go to these TOEFL exams and they score really well. I don't know if you're getting someone to take it for you. I have no idea how that works. But if you're flagged in for an interview and you cannot show that you speak English, you can't study here because what is the language of instruction at AUA? English. English, right. Okay? Target scores. You have all of these scores listed in the documents that are in your folder, so I'm not going to talk about what those are. Automatic denial threshold. If you've received a 67 or a 5.5, what happens? Uh, okay, you want to retake those scores before, you want to retake those exams before you apply. And these are what the math auto denials are. So if you have these scores or less and you're applying to these programs, make sure you retake your exams. Now, the entering class profile for last year, is this higher than the target scores or lower? Higher. higher. Right, and so last year, our application pool was pretty small because of the number of high school graduates. So this is something that you definitely want to keep in mind. There are three errors on the documents that are in your folders. So go to our website, 
to see what these three scores are. I think we have them listed wrong in, in the flyer that's there, or you might want to take a photo of this. But again, this was 2018. It doesn't mean that those numbers are going to get you in in 2019. In 2019, if all of you collectively, you're competing against each other, if collectively you're all much smarter than last year's group, those expectations go up. So don't think last year's numbers, oh, I've got it easy, I don't have to retake a test. You may still be on borderline with last year's numbers. Now, is it going to be easier this year or harder this year? Why? There's more of you. Exactly. Um, in terms of preparing as well, look at our website. Absolutely everything is listed on the admissions website. A lot of times you'll call us to ask questions that are listed in the FAQs. Um, know what our deadline dates are. It seems that everyone already knows what they are. Know what program you want to study in. We call people in for an interview and we say, why do you want to study business? Why do you want to study computer science? And the answer, because I want to study computer science. Does that tell us anything? Right, so you guys really need to have an answer to why you're picking the program that you want to study in. We have open classes that are currently available. So you can actually go sit in on classes that all of our programs are currently offering. You know what the policies are, and who's a little nervous about how to pay for their education? Right, so we're going to have Marina talk to you a little bit later about how it actually isn't going to be as scary for those of you who might have the need. So preparing to apply, this is the website. Who's visited our website? Awesome. Where do you go here? Go ahead, Dr. Is it easy to navigate? Did you find the information? We just redesigned it. Does it work? Found what you needed? Okay. It's amazing, right? They love it, Dr. Rose. Um, so you'll see a lot of different fields here. Um, undergraduate is the one that you want to select. Once you go to undergraduate, there's all of these different titles up here. So if you want to go to an open class, you're going to select on visit here. If you want to see what our FAQs are, just go over here. The selection process and the AUA student profile, that's where all the target and um, uh, score targets are, the profiles are. This is our calendar. In addition to open houses, we have a lot of different events throughout the year. So if you want to attend, check out the calendar page. And again, one of the best advice that I can give is make sure you attend an open class. Who has attended an open class before? Okay, was it helpful? What, what does an open class help you with? You and the leather jacket. I'm staring at you. Open class is definitely not going to let you know how to apply to AUA. But does it give you a better idea of the academics? Did you understand what was going on in the class? You understood? Good, army chocolate for her. I want to make a chocolate sound of stuff. Chocolate, chocolate. Um, and then once you get, so you'll see the different programs that are offering open classes. The only program this year not offering open classes data science because they're just starting this year and they'll have open classes next year. For entrance exams, how do you prepare for them? There's one word that starts with an S and ends with a Y. Study. Good. Working. What? Sergey. Or Sergey. So you have two opportunities. Who is above the age of 16? For those of you who are 16 and older, you can all become members of our AUA library. And that will allow you to come and use some of the books um, to help you prepare for your exams. We also have AUA Extension, otherwise known as Sergey. And I'm going to have Sergey talk to you a little bit about what um, they offer. Thank you. Welcome to AUA everyone. This is a full house. I'm very happy to see you and I'm also teaching at AUA so I'm hoping to see you in my class, which I'm means so that... I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. AUA's colors are blue and yellow. Do you see this? He's the fashionista at AUA. <laughs> okay, so AUA extension. Uh, we are uh, in the main building, room 110, and you can come uh, to us today until 3 o'clock and every day, except sun uh, Saturdays and Sundays, if you have questions about how to prepare uh, to be successfully admitted um, to AUA. So what we offer, we offer three types of courses. Language courses, if you need to improve your English. Uh, TOEFL, GRE, GRE is not for you, uh, so SAT, uh, ACT, which, is, which you can find under this, uh, Math Proficiency for Successful Admission, okay? 
And uh, the third type is uh, the uh, professional development courses, which you can look into, but really what you need is this, okay, for your admission. So math proficiency for successful admissions and TOEFL. Mm -hmm. So you uh, go to our website to extension.aua.am. This is the website. You register uh, for those uh, prep courses and uh, we call you back. We call you back and we tell you that the group uh, is there already. We have, you know, up to eight, eight to ten maximum people in each group and we start periodically, okay? So, um, what we do during this class, we do mock tests, we teach you the strategies how to be successful in these exams, um, and we basically prepare you um, to, to be a good student here, okay? Uh, if you still need to improve on your English, please consider attending our general English courses before TOEFL. Uh, a lot of people come to, uh, to be part of the TOEFL prep courses, but we don't accept that because you have to take a placement test, and if you're below level 5, we don't accept you to TOEFL, okay? So make sure you have a good English uh, you know, level uh, before coming to TOEFL. Um, so, uh, there are different durations, 48 hours for math proficiency and um, 54 hours for TOEFL, uh, which is basically, you know, the time that you can be very successful in this course, but it's not a guarantee, of course, you have to work hard. So, we teach you how to work hard during these courses, because you're going to be working hard during your studies at AUA, and especially in my class, I teach Intro to Business, uh, strategy and so on, so I'll see you there, okay? If you have questions, 110 M, first uh, floor main building. Good uh, Dr. luck. Dr. Tantushan has also donated three things for today's raffle, which includes who's interested in the TOEFL prep course or the math prep course. So we're giving a free course out during the raffle. So if you're wearing blue and yellow, you might just get it. That was a joke. All right, thank you. So we're going to quickly talk to you about um, tuition. So I have a few parents here. AUA is definitely one of the most expensive universities in Armenia. But I think what a lot of people don't know is that we have really strong tuition assistance. So who is a citizen of Armenia? Raise your hands. So for those of you who are citizens, we practice something called 100% need, uh, percent need blind admissions. Uh, Armin, you're really blind down on stage. Please don't do that. Um, and what that is is basically, do we care if you need financial aid to study at AUA, yes or no? Will it impact your off, uh, admissions? No. no. They are completely separate. So if you think that applying for financial aid is going to hurt your application for admissions, you are wrong. May I tell you this? Pass up this. Pass up OK, good. 26% of all tuition revenue that AUA collects goes back to something called our financial aid bank. So that's where the money compiles that we are then able to provide financial aid to uh, different students. And currently we have more than 10 different financial aid options available for our students. I'd like to invite Marina, who's going to talk to you about our, um... oh wait, first let me scare you. So these are our tuition rates for fall 2019. So for those of you interested in business, as long as you hold Armenian citizenship, do I have any Syrian Armenians here? See the higher gun. So you guys get locked into a local, uh, the local Armenian citizen rate. And if you have the ten-year residency, then this is your tuition: two million one hundred thousand drom. For international students, it's a two million drom extra. It's four million one hundred thousand, and then all other programs are locked in at one million six hundred thousand and three million six hundred thousand. Does that seem expensive? Well, one thing you have to realize is that those international rates are actually the cost of education at AUA. That is actually when we talk about the building, the faculty, the staff, your education actually does cost the university four million a year. But because of donors around the world who give us money, we're able to subsidize it for Armenian citizens so you pay virtually only half of the true cost of education. So then, if you have the bill of 2 million or 1.8 million, then you can get financial aid on top of that if that is beyond your needs. Okay, so this is Marina. Say hi, Marina. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Go ahead. Uh, 
Well, look at those faces. <laughs> What's going on? You, I guess, just settle the intuition uh, amount, and that's why you have this special expression now. So I will hurry up to, to calm you down. Let me firstly introduce myself. I am Marina from the Office of Financial Aid, and um, my portion of the presentation is going to be brief. So I will quickly introduce you the procedures and policies regarding financial aid so that you have a full understanding of uh, what is financial aid and how to apply for it, what to include in your uh, tuition assistance package, etc. for you to have a better understanding of what your steps will be in the future. So, um, the first thing we're going to talk about is defining financial aid, what is financial aid and what are its types. Also, who can receive financial aid and uh, how to apply? And in case you have any further questions, whom to address your questions. So, tuition assistance is a need-based tuition assistance which is for citizens of Republic of Armenia. So in case you are Armenian citizens, you are eligible to apply for a need-based tuition assistance uh, which may be up to, uh, from, from, from zero to 90% of your tuition. So, uh, we have both of Armenian citizens here. You are eligible to apply for a need-based tuition assistance. In case you are international students, or you are students who have uh, tenure residency cards, you are not eligible to apply for a need-based tuition assistance, but we still have some other options for you. I'm gonna talk about it a, a little later. So, as I've mentioned, the levels of financial aid may be from 0% to 90%. Uh, there is a special financial aid committee who makes decisions uh, taking into account your financial aid package that you present. So firstly, in order to apply, you need to visit our website, which is financialaid.aua.am, and you need to check our deadlines. The deadlines will be published on, I mean the updated deadlines will be published on November 1st, so you can visit our website on November 1st and check our updated deadlines. Uh, also there you can find the checklist. Checklist is included in your folders as well. You can have a look and familiarize yourself with all the required documents to include in your financial aid package. Uh, so this tuition assistance package, we'll talk about this, what includes uh, in it. And you need to submit the uh, tuition assistance package to the financial aid office. Hard copy of the documents together with the application form. So, uh, tuition assistance package includes application form, which can be found on our website. If you go to our website, you will find their forms. It is the first form, and also the required document, which looks like this, this checklist. Um, you have them in your folders, and also on our website, you can find them. And you need to submit the documents uh, in hard copy. One important thing regarding the, uh, deadlines. As you know, admissions has its deadlines. Financial aid is the same, has its own deadlines which are early, regular, and rolling. So I would like to explain you the mechanism, how it works for you to have a full understanding of this. If you apply to admissions office by early deadline, it means you need to apply for financial aid again by early deadline, which is December 21st this year. Um, if you want to apply by regular deadline, the deadline for financial aid is going to be April the 5th. And for rolling deadline, financial aid uh, deadline will be July the 1st. So in case you apply for admissions by early deadline, but you come and apply for financial aid by, let's say, regular deadline, because you didn't manage to uh, have the financial aid package with you, the uh, application form will not be accepted. And in case, of, in case of rolling deadline, we have uh, one nuance, let's say. Uh, funds, tuition assistance that you will receive will depend on availability of funds. So, and uh, once you are successfully admitted to AUA and you became students, uh, you need to keep in mind that every year you need to apply for tuition assistance. So if you, got, if you receive tuition assistance for one academic year, it doesn't mean you have to sit down, relax, and you have nothing else to do. No, you need to think ahead and apply for the upcoming academic year by March the 1st uh, to receive any type of tuition assistance if you're eligible. In case of academic scholarships, uh, American University of Armenia offers um, 
50% university-wide academic scholarships for each program, there is only one spot. Starting from this year, uh, every program has only one spot for a uh, academic scholarship, which will be up to 50%. And again, in case of uh, academic scholarships, students or applicants, they do not apply for this. Do we have international students who are not citizens of Armenia? Okay. Uh, in case of international students, American University of Armenia offers international scholarships which are merit-based and they cover up to 50% of your tuition. In order to apply for this option, you need to submit application form, again, which you can find on our website, and also the essay, which is on the first uh, page of the, essay, of the application form that you will find online. The deadline to apply for international scholarship is June 30th. Also, we have Aurora Graduate Scholarship. Uh, in case of Aurora Graduate Scholarship, uh, citizens of Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, Russia, Georgia, and Iran are eligible to apply for this type of uh, financial aid and receive up to 100% of uh, scholarship, depending on both merit and need criteria. So Aurora Graduate Scholarship can cover airfare to Armenia from the country of residence and also housing costs in a university dormitory. The deadline to apply for Aurora Graduate Scholarship again is June 30th. So what other options do we offer to our students in order for them to make the process of covering tuition easier? We can offer deferred payment option. So what is deferment? Deferment allows the student to temporarily up to, uh, suspend up to 50% of their tuition and cover it uh, part by part. So every year you cover part of it and the rest you're going to cover after uh, graduating within two years. This option is offered to freshman students and sophomore students. If you want to take this option, the deadline to apply is September the 9th. And in case of junior and senior students, uh, American University of Armenia offers student loan options. AUA has teamed up with Biblos Bank Armenia offering heavily subsidized student loans to our students. The deadline to apply for a loan is September the 4th. Uh, another option that I'm going to present you is installment payment plan. So what is this? Uh, when you sign your education contract, you're going to cover your tuition in 8 month installments. But if you have some difficulties and uh, you are unable to cover your tuition that way, you can apply to our office and we will let you cover your uh, tuition in 10 or 12 month installments. The deadline to apply again is September the 20th for fall semester and February the 7th for spring semester. The deadlines you can find on our website, just check it on November the 1st when you will have your updated uh, deadlines there. And also work study option. After uh, studying at AUA for a semester, you can actively look for, look for vacancy announcements and apply so that you do some kind of work at AUA, being a work study uh, student, and the salary that you're going to get will be uh, forwarded to your tuition. So this is also a financial aid option that you can uh, apply for. In case you have any further questions, feel free to ask. It's better to ask lots of questions, but to have the right answers to all the questions that you have so that you don't have any misunderstandings in the future. You can write an email to us, financialaid.aua.am. Our emails are checked regularly and you will receive a, a response to your issue within three business days. Or you can call us. Can I ask something? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can we apply to multiple programs simultaneously? Multiple programs, you mean financial aid options. Let's say you applied for need-based tuition assistance and you still have difficulty, you can apply for student loan, you can apply for deferment, you can apply for installment payment plan, yeah, simultaneously. You can do that. Another question, does covering loan is harder than in person in other countries or for other students? Uh, what's your situation? 
I'm, I'm asking is... Are you, what citizen are you? Yeah, I'm Armenian. I mean, <laughs> so the question is, is it... Uh, Hard to color... What are the interest rates for the loans? Annual interest rate is 5%. Yeah. So, so it's a very competitive uh, interest yeah, rate for the other banks. What, for those, for any, we're going to, we have about another 10 slides and then afterwards we'll take some additional questions. But one quick thing to note is that Marina and her colleagues will be available in the Office of Financial Aid from 1.30 to 4 to answer any questions you guys have. Um, so to basically put to picture, last year, 47% of students who applied to AUA at the undergraduate level applied for tuition assistance. So this is about citizens of Armenia. What percentage do you think received? 77%. So the majority of students, and I see people taking photos, this is again on the tuition flyers that are in your packages. Um, so the majority of students who are applying will receive financial aid. What this does not mean is that 47% applied and all 77%. So this is 77% of the 47%. Um, in terms of the average reduction, so what do you think was reduced? How much of a discount was there in tuition? 55%. Okay, so you might get the minimum might be 25%, the maximum might be 90%. Um, during the parent session, so if you guys have parents who are a little bit nervous and they're here, during the parent session I have three students who are going to talk about their own um, application process of how they applied and give you some sort of advice based on their own experience. So I think it's always easier to listen to the students who have gone through this process than to hear what the process is from our end. For those of you who are not citizens of Armenia, last year, out of everyone who applied, 87, uh, almost 90% of our international students received um, a scholarship, and the average scholarship award was 42%, so it discounted the tuition by that much. So we are ready to start our raffle. Do we have any questions before I start the raffle? Why don't we do questions for a few minutes? Go ahead. Armin, where is Armina? Did Armina just leave me? No, Armina, John, whoever has a question, you're going to give them the microphone so we can hear. Okay, so make sure it works. Oh, not working. Now it's working. So if I'm joining to the Army this year, uh -huh. should I apply for financial aid this year or after I will come back? Marina, is Marina still here? So the question is, if I'm going to the Army, do I need to apply for tuition assistance? Uh, I would suggest you to visit our office, which is located on main building, third floor. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, so please welcome to our office for further questions. It is located on uh, the third floor, room 304. So you can ask all your questions and you will get a detailed response to everything. But generally, yes. do you, I mean, do, should they apply when they to the You army? should apply. Uh, yeah, you should apply. And once you go to the army, it will be uh, suspended for some time. And then when you are back, you will let us know and it will be reinstated. All right, other questions? Armin over there, you gotta run. Right there, left, 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 left. All right guys, try to give Armin a space. She's gonna be a little bit slow because she's gonna try not to kill you in the process. She's small, but she's strong. So I've heard that um, AUA math recently doesn't have so much advantage, as much advantage as uh, SAT. Is that true or not? Because a lot of people are saying that SAT uh, nowadays is better than AOA math. Um, okay, so anyone who asks a question gets a chocolate. Um, so, is there an advantage? Well, the advantage of the SAT is that it's still an exam that you can take. The AUA math test is no longer possible. But if you've applied this year or next year and you have the AUA math test, there, you will not be disadvantaged for having that at all. So whoever told you that lied to you. Okay, next question over there, Armin. Good luck running. Run, 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 run. Oh, you're loud. I like you already. Go. Will it grab you or give you? So that's a, so one in terms of a one ten. It's a very competitive score. Did you give him chocolate, Army? You don't want to give the person who got a one ten on the table chocolate. So a one ten is a very competitive total score. So one of that advantages will be that your English 
um, yes, presuming that you can <laughs> show that in an interview if you're uh, invited to one. That will give you an advantage there. Um, in terms of scholarships, uh, I assume that they're also looking at the test scores. You said that there's one scholarship for each program. Oh, you have a second one. Go. Can I apply for admission to the standard Yes! Why is that a question? Go take his chocolate back, Arnie. I didn't like that question. Yeah, so for all, what did I say? 12th graders can start their applications now. And then the next question is, but I don't have my high school diploma. But you'll have it by the time that you, you know, you're, you start your study sometime in August. You need to show us proof of graduation sometime in around, like, July. And your admission is contingent upon you graduating. So let's say you get your admission letter sometime in February, and you're like, and then you don't get your office stuff because you moved off. <laughs> we'll say fuck up. You will still need it, exactly. And what role is the... He is monopolizing the question. The last one, and then I need to go. Okay, the last one. Okay. Does the graduation score to school by age or all? Like, for instance, I have great school points. Where do you see people? Where do I school points? So, as I said, we have something called holistic admissions. If you have really phenomenal scores, but you have, let's say, a really low GPA, that's going to throw a red flag to the committee. But they're also going to look at your grades. Maybe in grades 10 and 11, you didn't do so well, and in grades 12, you started doing a little bit better. So it's not like they'll look at every aspect of your application, and you might get flagged for an interview because of that. All right? Study. <laughs> not say gay, but study on this one. Go. Uh, Next year, we, we don't have army done here. Like, you don't want to give people chocolate, chocolate on it, or just on it is. Um, so the ACT target scores will not be available for this year just because we don't have enough test takers um, to be able to have good averages. We anticipate next year that we'll have um, target scores available. OK, that's a good question. Microphone, microphone, microphone. Is there any difference between SAT and ACT? And if I take both of them, can I show both? I scores? feel so bad for your parents. You guys take exams like they're free. So there is a difference between the SAT and the SAT. Are you ready? Nasty. They're different exams. Um, but we accept both of them. So which one you ultimately take is up to you. Do we recommend you take both? I mean, ultimately, the decision is yours. but. There are different study methods for each exam. So if you're taking both exams, that means you're spreading yourself thin when it comes to studying. Okay? Guys, this is really important. If you want to retake an exam, study before you spend your parents' money. Because if you take it 25 times, there's no guarantee you're going to do better. AUA does accept the highest score, but you need to study, prepare, and then take it. Go. Go with I mean, Just throw it, but try not to show it. Yeah. Screen. Well, my question is, uh, why some faculties are now having a little bit less seats? Because uh, last year, if I re remember right, uh, the faculty... Uh, if I remember right, the faculty of engineering had nearly 40 seats, and now it has 30. Why is the quiz Because Number of students? Yeah. I answer that question. What is your name? What's your name? Digran. Digran. I gave you the answer to that question. Why did we have less students last year than we did the year before that? This year. How many high school graduates were there last year? A lot less. No, I mean, why it's decreasing? Starting as of this year? Yeah. So we're, we're looking at, in terms of when we decide on the number of students for each cohort, we're looking at interest as, uh, as well as competitive applicant pools. I feel like Dr. Rose wants to jump in here. But also, we have limited space. So when we add another program like data science, other programs have to get smaller. So we only can take in 400 undergraduates every year. So 400 is the cap. When we add programs, the existing programs ad, uh, admit fewer students. Business used to have a number of 200, now they're down to 160. Yeah, eventually we're going to get business down to 120. Yeah, but it, it is literally very not equal. The Do you run? Life, I want you to trust us. Life is not fair. 
show. So where's my raffle, Bob? Milena, come on up this way. So this is Milena. For those of you who think that you might have paid her money, you're going to get picked. It doesn't work that way at any way. We're actually going to have you guys pick your own name. So who wants a keychain? No one. Ooh. Okay, so you stand up, don't pee, pick a number. Do you guys all have your numbers? Are we ready? Are we excited? No. Get up then. What's the number? Who has 150? <laughs>
Now what? Do I have a 35? Are you coming? Why are you guys so shy? You should be, I win the t-shirt, yay! <laughs> now we have three t-shirts. Thir 35. Okay, and then we have three more prizes. The AUA placement test for English. What? This is donated to us by AUA Extension. Uh, you. Pick. He gets to pick. Because I'm scared by his shirt. What is it about? 356. Bye, yes, Sam. Are we done? Run this down to her. Make sure you check. And then, who wants a tote? That girl right there with the leather jacket. Who wants a free TOEFL test? Ah, 